Hello and welcome. It is the Day 4 Devotion Podcast, and you are tuned in here faithfully. I just know it. I just know that uh, everybody who happens to be listening to this right now, they are just faithful, faithful to this podcast. Yes, the the, the faithful listener. My understanding is that uh, we know that... Uh, uh, there's we have a you know a special someone out there who feels that they themselves are that faithful listener and they're probably right no doubt no doubt in fact i feel like their uh commitment to the podcast is one that uh is full of accountability you know they feel accountable to uh to listen in to at least give us that one hit uh of viewership to uh to keep us going and we appreciate it that's right. You know, I'm not always great with names, but I just going to shout out. Great job listening there, Carrie. It's good to know that uh, that you're listening. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so, uh, look, that was our, you know, failed attempt at uh, at humor, which is probably the best name for the podcast. <laughs> and uh, look, I, I maybe, and maybe we need some accountability. That's that's the, the subject of the day. And uh, we're going to be talking about accountability. And, and maybe we need some accountability, Dan, to, uh, I don't know, get get some better stuff, better content for our faithful listeners. So, so let us know whether the jokes are good or great. (laughs) (laughs) That's the type of accountability I'm looking for. Yeah, that's right. You know what? That's, that's actually, uh, pretty spot on. I think that honestly, that is the type of accountability that we're looking for. I think a lot of times, you know, we've, we talked about mentorship, you know, many weeks ago when we were doing the cores and I think that that can be, uh, the reason that people are resistant to accountability, to true accountability is because those are the options. Like, I, tell me, tell me I'm doing a good job. Accountability is on that scale. Am I doing good or am I doing amazing? Right. Cause really what we want, well, uh, you know, nobody necessarily wants accountability. Accountability is something that you need. It's not something that you want. And really what we want is cheerleaders. You know what yeah. I mean? We want people to be cheering us on, you know, even think about like, the scenario, whether, you know, I I think especially of a kid doing this, but it can happen in your adult life as well, where you take something that you already know is good, right? Right. Whether it's a piece of art or music or like something that you can demonstrate and you're like, Hey, can I show this to you? Can I, can I perform this in front of you? Can I do this thing? And you, you tell me not, you know, whether or not it's any good and you already know, Right. Like, this is like your forte. It's the best you've done. And you're like, I don't know. Like, what do you think? And then people are like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And we've talked about this in the podcast before, too, where even when people give us that compliment where it is accurate and true, we're just like, oh, I don't know about that. It's kind of, you know, yeah. kind of thrown together. Probably going to have done a little better, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and, and then, you know, then that's that false humility thing where it's all like that. But the, the thing is, is that we don't need accountability for our strengths. We need accountability for our weaknesses and to think that, you know what? I think I've got that covered. I don't know that I really need accountability in my life. Um, That's a sign of weakness right there. That's a sign of a blind spot. It really is. And, and honestly, like when you're seeking accountability, uh, obviously you do it with somebody that you, that you know, well, that you trust, that you respect, uh, you know, contextually for us in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a responsibility uh, on the person who is holding you accountable as well. You know, use the example of, you know, bringing to like a, a parent or, or somebody or a friend, you know, something that you already know is good, right? Like here's this, this piece of art that I already know is amazing. Oh, wow. You know, um, but there can be hurt caused when accountability is asked for, feedback is asked for, Mm -hmm. And honesty is not what's given. Right. And so the kind of the, in the same vein of example is, you know, the, uh, let's say musically, right. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey mom, I'm going to sing this song for you. Oh, okay. Like that's uh, yeah. I remember you doing that. That's a a new language. It's a new language I'm working on. I, and uh, yeah, you know, and, and honestly, I mean like, you know, anybody who has worked uh, in the worship area of church for, you know, more than 20 minutes has encountered somebody at some point whose mother told them they were musical Mm -hmm. and uh, they are not. And now somebody else has to be the bearer of accountability to be like, Hey, I know that you think that you are, 
I was going to try to like throw out some popular singer's name. I don't know that I know any current ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Celine Dion. Yeah. Like, Man, you're a regular Patsy Cline. Yeah. <laughs> you know, any, any, I was going to make a stupid, <laughs> I was going to make a stupid joke, but I, you know what? I am going to, I'm going to accept the feedback. Accept yeah, the exactly. I'm going to accept accountability. I'm going to move on from that, from that joke, but you know what I mean, right? Like I you do. don't do people favors when they've asked for your, if they have asked for your sincere counsel on something Mm -hmm. and then you just kind of give them fluff and you, you, you know, in your mind, graciously send them on the road to hurt. Right. And in music or art or whatever, that's one thing. But when we're talking about accountability today and our need for it, we're actually just talking about the way that you do life. Yeah, that's true. And, and that's really where it starts is for our need for it. And to illustrate the fact, we have our old pal, uh, Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. If you remember, Jeremiah caught the biggest bass ever caught on our show. That's right. <laughs> no, it's uh, man. Jeremiah. This is not a, this, this different podcast. That's our other fishing That's right. podcast. That's You'll have right. To, and tune into that one. Yeah. Search for that one. Something fishy on this one. Anyway, They're really, really in. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is, ask that. I'm thinking the prophet Jonah is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> We're, are we are we really or are we unraveling? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yes is, is the, the answer. answer. Yep. So Jeremiah seventeen nine, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and mm. desperately sick. Who can understand it? Uh, I the Lord search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. And you know. Uh, maybe you already have at home one of our uh, day for devotion pencil cases, right? Uh, but we have often said that that uh, follow your heart pencil case is you know one you got to throw away. That's for middle school, man. That's it's just that's, uh, it's just bad advice. It's the, terrible. Uh, the advice. follow your heart thing. You're good with the pencil case. You want a pencil case? Fill your it's boots, or, or fill your pencil case, as it were. But you know, and, and again, like look, we understand the spirit of this, like follow your heart. It's it sounds nice, and you think like it's it's talking about sincerity and about your dreams. But you know, sometimes I think our sincerity has to be evaluated. And you know what? Maybe your dream is like a, a nightmare, actually, if you were to follow it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we have to we have to accept the premise that Jeremiah puts out here that your heart at its base left to its own device is wickedness because the desire of your heart is almost always pride. Mm. Your heart wants, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. And often what the heart wants is the stuff that's all good for me. And sometimes that's for the greater good. Um, but not always, I would hazard to say not usually, Well, Um, it kind of goes back to even that illustration that you used right off the hop, right? Where usually where we go searching for, you know, feedback is where we are, are pretty certain at the outset that that feedback is going to be positive. mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here's the thing, like from, you kind of have to build this in to your life. Like accountability is not comfortable. No, like nobody, nobody likes to be told, Hey, you're wrong. You know, nobody likes to be told you're off base. And here's the thing too. And this is why it's important for people to take the lead on this themselves and invite it because accountability can barge its way into your life. And usually by then now, now we're already in trouble. Right. And so prior to that, you want to invite that where you've given someone permission, please evaluate my being, evaluate my life. And I will listen. I might not like it. And you may have to remind me that I've made this arrangement, but it's good. You know, it's funny. Even just as we were talking about this. So this is a little, it's a little card that I have in my Bible and you and I've used this before. And uh, and like, here's a spoiler alert. Like Ben and I are accountability partners. We check in on each other and we've, we've done it in a formal way like this before. Usually it's not how we do it now, but this is a good way. So I just want to give you, this is really quick. Uh, so this is a little laminated thing I have in my Bible 
I got this from Gary Johnson, professor that I had in, in uh, my master's degree and friend of the show. And it's, it's just a list of accountability questions. And I won't read them all, but it's things like this. Questions, and you have to answer honestly, is like, how is your soul? Did you spend time with Jesus? What did you do? Are you loving your wife? Are you seeking her best? Have you been emotionally tempted this week? Are you disciplining your eyes? Uh, have you spent time with your kids? Doing what? Are you responsible for your success? Or is God, is your pride out of whack? And then the very last question on this card is, have you just lied to me? Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's kind of like a last ditch, you know, Man, that's like, like if you were if you were skirting it, man, this is the time to bring it back. Yeah, and and again, you know, like and and Dan has, has illustrated it well here. Like when we say when we're talking about inviting accountability, we're not like kind of like abstract talking about like the accountability of scripture or you know, trying to be self disciplined or you know, if I was gonna say self accountability, I can't imagine how that would possibly be a thing. Um it's but it is that intentional inviting another Christian to, you know, just help keep you accountable in your walk, because we all know like that if you have to report to somebody, you are, it, it's, it's helpful, right? Like you think about, you know, if you're somebody that likes to write, right? Well, I say you write music or you write poetry or you mm -hmm. write prose. Those are pretty much the options. Um, you know, if I you have a, poetry to the prose, oh, oh boy, you, <laughs> you need to, you need, like, I don't know about you, like, for me, on something like that, I need a deadline. Yeah. Like, yes. and so, like, I need somebody that's going to be like, hey, like, you said you were going to do this. Did you do it? And I, I think that that's really beneficial in our Christian walk. And the thing about it is, is that if you invite accountability before, you know, you wander off into the stupid pit. Ah, uh, the stupid pit. Yeah. You know, like it's nice when like you don't even get close to it. Like it's not even like it's while you're dancing around it or God forbid after you've fallen in. Mm -hmm. um, because once you've fallen in and then you do get confronted uh, and hopefully you do, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it's not fun. And like you said, you sometimes you got to remember that arrangement that you made. That's it. Because you have to be able to yield to it. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell the story super quickly is the Reader's Digest version and, and cryptic to, uh, you know, keep parties in the dark. But and you'll you'll know the story that I'm talking about. Um, I'll fill in the names. I can remember. Like, and this is and this is a, this is a nod to how long we've been practicing this. I can remember in Bible college where I had an encounter at the college where I thought I was really right about something and made that very known in a group setting. And I can remember as soon as you and I got back to our apartment, you confronted me on it and I denied it, dismissed it. You said, look, you did this thing. And I said, that is not what I did. And you said to me, you think that you're this, but really you're this. And I was like, nope, that's not true. I was right. Here's why I did what I did. No regrets. And then I went into my room. I sat in front of my computer to go do whatever it was I was doing and just squirming. And you had gone to your room. And so I went back, went in and I moved all the crap off your bed and I sat down and said, tell me again. <laughs> do you remember this? Are you, are you I, suggesting that my bed was messy that I had? I, I, I tried to do that to room. take a little attention off of yeah. myself. Yeah. And I so, think that you needed to clean your own room. I do. Yeah. I do remember this. Yes. And then you told me again and I said, you're right. And then I left our apartment and I walked back to the school to find those who needed to be apologized to, to apologize, which was a lot of fun. No, it wasn't. No part of it was fun. Didn't like any of it, but it's necessary. And it kind of brings us to, to a much different extent. The next passage of scripture. And if you go to Bert's corner, we talk a lot about this stuff on Sundays is worse because of the discussion is deriving from, we have this narrative of, David and Bathsheba, right? And so in order to get to the verse, just really quickly, this is obviously the story where, you know, the Israelites have gone off to war. David should be there. He's not. He's idle at home. He sees Bathsheba taking a bath, which is, you know, jokes aplenty there. And he, what jokes? he, calls, her, he calls her in and, you know, uh, bad things happen. 
she's pregnant and now he's in real trouble. And so he tries to bring Uriah back. That's uh, that's Bathsheba's husband. And Uriah is a good guy in the army. And it's important to note here too. Like sometimes we hear the story of Bathsheba and, you know, even ask somebody, do you remember what Bathsheba's husband's name is? And sometimes people are like, Uriah, or I know it starts with you. And it's like, and Uriah kind of just becomes like this like faceless person in the story. Like the only reason that you know uh, about Uriah is because of Bathsheba. Uriah is one of David's mighty men. Yeah. This he's is not a- some, he's not some faceless character. No. Right. And so, you know, brings Uriah back. Uriah being one of the mighty men, too good a guy, you know, won't go eat with his wife, won't come home and sleep with his wife, like sleeps on his doorstep. And so then David has him killed. So now we've got big trouble and it's, it's come up to the Lord. So the Lord sends the prophet Nathan. Now, David has not invited Nathan to speak into his life. The Lord has sent Nathan. Okay. Yeah. That's important to note. Big time. This is not David inviting feedback on how things are going. Exactly. This is what we call Kings weren't big on that. This is called forced accountability and it is the worst kind. It It is is no fun. Uh, So, you know, Nathan comes in and tells this parable, right? About two men, their neighbors, a rich man, a poor man. The rich man has flocks and flocks. Uh, It should be noted too, this would really speak to David who used to be a shepherd, who knows what it's like to care for his sheep, which is probably why it ignites him like the way that it does. It's also important to note that these like men who are neighbors, like there's a reason that David can see Bathsheba from the palace. Mm. Okay. Also neighbors. Also neighbors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not like he's out there with a, an ancient telescope, right? You know what I mean? Or binoculars, like as if that would make it, I don't know if that makes it any better. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. This is, this is what adds, that's where he crossed the line. It was in those spectacles, man. <laughs> so you have to fill in your own blanks there. Anyway, so he tells his story, rich man, poor man, you know, a lot of sheep, one sheep that he doesn't even just love like a pet. Like he loves like a daughter. Right. Like it's just a highlight, right? Traveler comes, rich man doesn't want to take one of his own. So he takes that lamb. I think it's significant. That's a lamb too, right? Mm-hmm. That, that belonged to his neighbor, prepared it. And David burns with anger because we hate our sin in someone else even more. And he's like, as surely as the Lord lives, that guy should die he should have to pay back four times as much because he did such a thing and had no pity and this is the verse that we're looking at which is second samuel 12 verse 7 to nine. 7 to 9 says then nathan said to david you are the man and not in the good way no this is what the lord the god of israel says i anointed you king over israel i delivered you from the hands of saul i gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms i gave you all israel and judah and if this had been too little i would have given you even more why did you despise the word of the lord by doing what is evil in his eyes you struck down uriah the hittite with a sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. And look, this is, I mean, you got to give big, big, big props to Nathan here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, this is forced accountability. This wasn't like, you know, their weekly coffee meeting where, you know, they were going to go through their you know, they're 10 questions, right? Right. Where he takes the little thing, yeah. laminate thing out of the scrolls. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know, like the laminator was, was on the fritz. And so like, this is, I mean, Nathan, I mean, he could be killed for this. Yes. Right. I mean, like, it could be like, Hey Nate, you know, sorry, you kind of lost your cool there. Uh, now you're going to lose your head. Like, right. I mean, Nathan is coming and look, this is not, this is not fun. I mean, mm-hmm. even, even take, you know, the the dangerous situation that Nathan is in, right? And and even to wind it back, uh, you know, to you know that day in in college, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you know, I mean, I think it's it's pretty clear to our viewer that you and I have a pretty good rapport. Mm-hmm. I mean, being being brothers helps. Being twins helps even more. Yeah. Uh, like you and I like to tease and torment one another, but you know, 
the, the idea of confronting you is not one that I relish in now, nor did I relish in then. And even in that time, it wasn't like, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this and it's going to be so fun and I'm going to be super right. And he was super wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. Like in, in holding you accountable in that, in that instance. And, th- and let me just say too, that there's been, you know, numerous we times where stories, it has flown yes. the other way, not as often, but it does happen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like that, that puts a knot in my stomach. Yes. Right. So like, I don't want you to be upset at me. It's, it's easy to read that passage and think that when Nathan says you are the man, that it's like a mic drop moment. Right. Yeah. And it's like, bam. And that, like Nathan is around with the other prophets just later. my mind. Like, <laughs> like, like he's around with the other prophets later being like, and so then I said to David, yeah, right. Yeah. That's, that's not what it is. It's probably more like you are the man. Yeah. Like this is what you this did. This is the thing that you did. It's not good. You know, and again, it's a prophet of God holding the king of Israel to account. But here's the thing, too. And this is what I want us to to hear in this, because sometimes you can hear, you know, people talking about accountability or devoting on accountability and think like, okay, like I should be able to hear that from people. And like, yeah, you, you should. However, I remember hearing Chuck Swindoll say this one time. Friend of the show. Not every exactly. I think he has a little podcast of his own somewhere. So I don't know if it's successful. I don't this know. One. Insight for something. Um, <laughs> that's what, that's what Jimmy look, you got. You got to give. You got to say his podcast. Now. It's, it's insight for living. I was going to say insight for something. That's what this one should be. It's insight, <laughs> but it's like totally different. Like there's insight for living. There's insight for something. <laughs> no. <laughs> now that I've derailed that. <laughs> oh man! But what he said more eloquently is not everyone has the right to wound us. Yeah. Okay. And so this is why you better go get your own accountability. Yeah. Because some people are out to hurt you and some people do it, you know, even maybe with right motive, but do it incorrectly. And this is why you ought to have somebody so that if somebody did take a step out where, you know, if somebody had raked me over the coals, I could come to you and say, listen, Ben, not as my brother right now, but as my accountability partner, I need to run the scenario by you. So you're not on my team and you're not on their team. You're just the objective listener. You tell me what you think. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I'm not saying that every time somebody gives you a dig, you better take it to heart. That's a good word too. That's a good word too. Because Because sometimes people come and correct you and you're right. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have the conversation and weigh it out. And that's why it's, it's, you know, so much more successful inside the the bond of trust. Again, you know, what what I think everybody should do is just, you know, ask their twin brother to be their accountability partner. That's just, that's, I found that very successful. Part of it is this. Okay. There's when, when, uh, when you look at a confrontation like that, you have to look at the goal and the goal is almost one of always one of two things. Either the goal is, or at least perceived as justice as right. to make it right or to make sure people know I'm right. Or the goal is to elicit repentance. Okay. And true accountability is not about justice. It's about repentance. It's not so that you will know that I'm right and you're wrong. Right. It's so you will soften your heart. Yes, exactly. And that is the desired outcome. And just, uh, we're going to get to the final scripture in Psalm 51, but it does make me think, you know, Sometimes people will hold somebody else accountable and then they'll go and tell the story. And if, yes. if your story is like, and then I told them da 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 da, and then they, you know, hung their head in shame or wept or, you know, put a sackcloth on and ashes and all this stuff as people um, do as that's is their way in the sackcloth podcast. Um, <laughs> it's like, you're not the hero you think you are in that story. Okay. The, the idea of confrontation, read Matthew 18. It's not one of our passages, but in confrontation, the goal is restoration and repentance, yes. right? And so in Psalm 51 verses three and four, uh, this is David, you know, post meeting with Nathan, uh, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me mm-hmm. against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that 
you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Yes. I just wanted like in the NIV, it says, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Yeah. And again, that is, that is so important. I just, just before it gets too much in the rear view, I just want to comment too. Like if you tell stories like that, like that one that you just referenced is like, and then I said this and they were like, I'm like, Oh man, they, they couldn't say anything. Then you tell that, like you're the hero yeah, and you're not, that's not what you're displaying in that story. But to this, sorry, you go ahead and respond. No, no. I'm just going to say you, you finish your point, but I've got a story now. You, you told a story on yourself. I've got one for me. Okay. All right. Well, again, I just want to highlight like the repentance here, like, David understands that he's done wrong and that he has a propensity for wrong that we all have. He says, I know my transgressions. Like I know my wrongdoing and my sin is before me. And this whole Psalm, this whole Psalm 51 is a call out for forgiveness because that's what repentance does. When you repent, you realize, like, here's what I've done to wrong. I and th- This is where we have that famous, like, you know, renew, mo- renew my heart, O Lord, and, and you know, renew an, uh, a right spirit within me or create mm. a right spirit within me. I said that wrong, but. That was, yeah, that was, that came verse, out. Let me just, let me just read it. So I get <laughs> yeah. it. Cre- verse 10, created me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Have that memorized. All right. Well, I was going to say, I. I think Dan, you need to spend a little more time memorizing. You know, apparently, I, I hate to hold your feet to the fire here in front of. Do it, man! I'm I was going to say everyone, but in front of, in front of some the one, one, and the one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, someone is that not yeah. the one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is this is still unraveling. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, listener. If you are still yeah. with us, yeah, I am. I admire your your uh, stick to itiveness. Look. Yeah. Uh, just going back on that whole idea, look, sometimes you need to be accountable and how you've held someone to account. And, uh, you know, I can think of a fateful night where, you know, somebody had mixed something up and they were wrong. Uh, it was in a commercial setting and I had to return to that person to get it sorted. And I was very right. And I knew I was right. They were very wrong and didn't know they were wrong. And the temperature kind of rose on that exchange to a point where it kind of boiled over and the person raised their voice to me with their wrong information mm-hmm. at a point where I could expose that wrong information and I could have done graciously and I did not. Uh, this is when I'm in my very early twenties, if I was 20 at all, um, Not an excuse, just information. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I pointed it out rather boisterously. And let's just say I did not let them off the hook. Uh, I was very, uh, way less than gracious. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I returned, I, you know, told the story of my, you know, and then I told them and then I, you know, it's just not, it's not a great story. I don't want to share it on the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh I know. Details. Oh, I know you know the story <laughs> because I came and I told you, and then I said, and then this happened, and I'm like, yeah, and you were like, oh no, man, like <laughs> that was not good. Like you, yeah. you're a jerk, I, and I'm pretty sure that's what you told me. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, you know that, and and in that instance, and in many other sense, that was the truth. And yeah. and and again, too, I was like, no, they. And it, it took me longer than it did you in that other time to come around to it. But, uh, but that was yeah. the truth. Yeah, and so yeah. again, you can catch yourself. That sin is before you. Uh, oh man. When you're the hero of that, like, then I told him story. Uh, I don't, very rarely are those good stories. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. Cause that it's- again, it's, it's before you and like my, my sin is before me. No, you, you don't like it. It, when it's pointed out and look, sometimes there is that cool down moment, right? Mm-hmm. Where if somebody gives you something like, you know, sometimes you got to sit in it and you got to evaluate it. And, and that's why it's so helpful to have that accountability person. Because again, like you said, sometimes people can come to you and you know, their feedback is, is not good. I try not to take uh, criticism from somebody I wouldn't take advice from. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's a that's a good rule. Doesn't mean that's that they're never right. That's right. 
but I think it's easier to take criticism from somebody you would take See, advice from. You can you can eliminate a lot of those pitfalls if you invite it in. Mm. When you don't, like then when I get criticized from somebody I wouldn't take advice from, I only have myself to evaluate it from. That's right. Right. But if I've invited accountability, if I've said, please watch my life and look, you're my accountability partner, but I have other people like I have, I'll tell you, there's a very, you know, dear woman in our church. And especially when I came on as the lead pastor, I went to her and her husband and said, if I am about to wander off into the stupid pit, would you please tell me if I say something from the platform that's colossally stupid, okay, that's just lacks self-awareness, that lacks grace, rather than letting me fall in. Because I think that's sometimes what we do. We see somebody, we're like, oh, I wouldn't do that, ah, you know, and just let them keep wandering down the road until you're like, well, they're a wreck now. Yeah. Like, you know, seek out some people. Oh, man. You know, seek out, especially somebody like you and I. I have a great, you know, accountability relationship, but sometimes we share too much perspective. And so I need That's somebody in a different demographic. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, you need somebody that's, that's able to see things differently than you do. I'll tell you what, uh, I'll say two things. Number one, uh, your spouse is not your accountability partner. No, that's one. However, that being said, especially from a male perspective, which is all I have, uh, sometimes when your wife says, Hey, you better watch this. You should watch it. You know what I mean? And just because you think like, no, that's dumb and you don't get it. You better at least take some time and consider it. Yeah. And look, um, and vice versa as well. Yes. And like we say, like it's an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure, right? Yes. Yes. Like it's way, 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 way better to be uncomfortably herded away from the stooping pit than to try to be airlifted out of there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's not good. And in the accountability reach too, uh, you have to be wise in uh, what your struggle is that you're seeking accountability for, because mm -hmm. sometimes, and look, this would be easy for you and I, uh, because we are so similar. Uh, and this is why, again, like you said, multiple voices in your life for this is good because there are, there are times where accountability partners can turn to enabling partners. Yes. Right. Where you're both struggling with the same thing. And so you're both liable to let one another off the hook for that thing, lest you have to have the uncomfortable conversation about how you have to make adjustments. That's right. But one adjustment I think that we can all make is clicking that subscribe button to the day four devotion. <laughs> uh, Excellent transition. That's yes. Into the end. I think we have completely unraveled here. Yeah. I got to have a conversation with you once this is done about that comment. Just so I you know. am not available. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Well, listen, man, I think that we better pray for that then. I think we just better pray. That's an important and part of accountability it too. It is important. Man. You got to pray, pray for your guy, man. Pray for him and with him. And yeah. so that's that's what we're going to do and, right and now. And pray for us. Do that, please. Would we you please? It. All right, let's do it. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we pause once again and acknowledge your goodness, that you are God, that you are great, that you are awesome in power. And Lord, you have... You've brought people into our lives. And maybe today, right now, someone is thinking, I don't really have that accountability. I, I need it. I, I want it. And, and I pray that you would just place somebody on their heart, someone you could speak to. And uh, Lord, again, we know that our lives are bare before you. There's nothing in our lives that goes unseen. And so I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to live with that reminder, that we would live lives that proclaim who you are, so that because of the way we live, others would know that you live. We give you thanks, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, I thank uh, our faithful listener. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I think that uh, you ought to be accountable to uh, tuning in every week. I don't know why I say tune in. It's not the radio. Yeah, there's a lot of phrases we do. Like yeah. That. But this, probably, probably nobody's tuning yeah, in. For, forward the tape of this to, some, to your accountability partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we got to go. Yeah, that this episode is over.